So we're here today in the England Media Centre. We're taking the uh, the hot seat that Trent Alexander-Arnold, now Johnny, Ar Johnny Northcroft of the Sunday Times is sitting in. And this is the latest FWA William Hill Bulletin from the World Cup. We've got an update on Gareth Southgate's fitness. Un unusually for once, we're interested in the manager's fitness. So <laughs> just run through what was, uh, what was the situation this morning in training. Well, the big news from training was he didn't wear the sling. We were all waiting to see if it would compromise Gareth uh, and, and, and his, um, his training activities, the shoulder injury, he came out and, uh, and he actually looked uh, moving quite freely, no sling. So perhaps it was, um, it's going to be a miraculous recovery and uh, England aren't going to be affected by uh, shoulder gate too much. Shoulder gate, oh, it's one of those. <laughs> um, but Deli Ali is still uh, yeah. touch and go, isn't he, for the weekend? That thigh injury, what was the update there? Yeah, Delhi didn't train and it's certainly not looking good for him to play at the weekend. In fact, I think we can almost write him off now in terms of the, the Panama game. The big question is, does he recover in time to, to play Belgium? And the vibes at the moment are that, that it's not going to be so serious that he might be out of the tournament, but he might still be struggling to make that, um, that Belgium game. Of course, if England win against Panama, they're pretty much through. So it would work out okay you know he could he could miss yeah. that Belgium game without it affecting anyone and obviously there was uh, the substitution at the week uh, in the last game mm -hmm. against Tunisia showed that uh, certainly Ruben Loftus-Cheek can, can be a, yeah. a very good replacement and possibly start this one I think, I, I think it's a really interesting one Gareth loves Ruben Loftus-Cheek mm -hmm. after he made his debut in, in November his enthusiasm was, was, was clear for, for, for Ruben and I think listening to him at that point we were all thinking this this lad's going to be in the World Cup if he if he has half a decent season, um, and even then, even when he was injured, you know Gareth was sort of holding a place open for him. So he's very much been in his plans. Um, I thought he had a little bit of a chance actually of, of even starting. Of starting yeah. yeah. Um, so the fact that there's now an injury, I think he's a natural replacement, and of course he did very well in that that cameo when he came on. And one of the questions really about England is. You know, Harry Kane. Obviously, mm. he's the uh, he's, he's now second favourite, I think, in the uh, for the Golden yeah. Boot. But he's always the sort of first goal scorer favourite mm. for England. But mm. he's the only goal scorer. At the moment, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, That's no. a bit of a worry, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think only goal scorer odds would be would be very <laughs> useful for Harry Kane. It is a worry, um, but you know, you can look at it two ways. There are players plainly who can score goals in the team. They haven't done it up till now. But at least they're there with club form, and, and if that can be unlocked, maybe through Alan Russell, the striker coach, or, or just getting them mentally right. You know, I, I, what I'm trying to say is, once somebody like Raheem Sterling or Deli Ali won't play, but once these lads start scoring, they do have goals in them. Mm. You know, they're capable of doing so. It is a worry that they haven't done so up till now. But Panama, are quite good opposition to be playing at this stage. You know, if you want to give Raheem a game to, to score, or even give Rashford a chance. Um, it's not a bad opposition to go against. Mm. Harry, well, Harry for the Golden Boot, though that's a tough ask. I yeah, think. Yeah. Well, it's you know depends how, we, how far England can go, really, can't it? That's that's the key, Jerry, because if you look at the the Golden Boot winners, they tend to play for teams that have gone at least to the quarterfinals, mm. if not if not further. I think the last couple of World Cups, the the mark has been round about six. Ronaldo's got four already. Looks like Portugal are going to be in the second round. Even if they go out at that stage, he might leave the tournament with, with sort of seven. Mm. So Harry would have his work cut out. I think he'd need England to, to take him to at least the quarterfinals to have a chance. But at the, in terms of the favourites, nobody's really scoring freely. Yeah. Um, I know Diego Costa's got three, but uh, Harry will think he can do it, won't mm. he? Of course he will. Full of confidence. Now we've touched on mm. shoulder gate. Yeah. Uh, also today we had team sheet gate. Team sheet, so yeah, yeah, yeah. If we got gates, we got gates. Uh, it seems that Sterling's out of the squad. If if that piece of paper that Steve Holland was seen carrying around on the yeah. training ground, or out of the team, so it's amazing how often history repeats itself. Ooh. I mean, we've seen these these spy stories so often, um, and and you know the the the, the coaches never seem to learn that the camera guys we've got are pretty good and they've got long lenses or could it be bluff and double bluff could it be bluff <laughs> I mean I mean I, I looking at this sheet it didn't look definitive to me that's mm. all I'd say it didn't look to me like it looked like a training exercise sheet it didn't it didn't look like a definitive team sheet so I, I, I'd read a bit into it mm. but not too much and there's still time to go I mean they can change their yeah. mind they can be trying something out yeah. today can't they so it's not yeah if it, if it was day before a game you know team shape day you'd you'd, you'd 
you'd really think, well, that, that's going to be it. But there is a bit of time. Mm. And, and of course, you know, there's, there's sort of fitness issues to, to unravel as well. Maybe, maybe players will be in a different state tomorrow. And I think one of the questions is, is Raheem Sterling suited to that number 10 uh, yeah. position? Because playing against a packed defence where he doesn't get a chance to use his mm. pace, which is one of his great assets, playing with his back to goal, yeah. perhaps, is he better playing wide? Is it better playing someone else yeah. in there? I'm a big fan of Raheem and I, I like him in that role. Um, I, I think, yes, he's got great pace and it's lovely for him when he can run on into space uh, coming in from wide. We know how good he is. I think he can play that role as well because another thing he's got is fantastic ability when he receives the ball. He's one of the best in, in the squad at doing it. You know, the way he can receive and turn at the same time and then beat the player, that's ideal to play number 10 in many ways. He just needs to score. He just needs to start getting some numbers on the board in that sense. But I, I think he's looked quite good with Harry Kane so far as a partnership. He just hasn't done his share of scoring. Mm. Um, and, and, and that's my only question. I, I'd play him. I'd, I'd give him a chance to score against Panama and, and get himself up and running. And then we would expect that England-Belgium then becomes the game that will determine the, the, mm. the one and two from the group. But yeah. when we were looking at it before, you know, we were thinking maybe Poland or Colombia in, yeah. in the last 16, but that could be different now, couldn't it? Could be Japan and Senegal. Mm. I mean, that, the thing about that group, that last group, which is Group H, you've got four teams who are pretty much of the same level mm. and, and, and it's a decent level. It's not, you know, they're not the top teams in the tournament, but they're all setting a, a, a certain standard. So I actually think whoever England gets, it will be, it'll be a tricky game. Um, it will be a tricky enough game. I, I, you know, I actually didn't think Poland looked, looked anything like they're capable of being. So whether, mm. whether they can recover from that, I don't know. Um, Senegal looked like pretty handy side but as I say whoever England get it'll, it'll be a little bit tricky in that game and, and not one to take take lightly and we're now getting into the second round of games yeah. are there are there any patterns emerging or are there any teams I mean Spain yeah. last night they didn't really not massively no. convincing against Iran were they? I'd, I'd say if there's a pattern it's that this is a very open World Ooh. Cup it reminds me a little bit of 2006 where Italy were a bit unfancied and they, they, they went all the way. Um, in fact, France were a bit unfancied. They went all mm. the way as well to the final. Um, there's nobody outstanding. You know, Germany, we've seen, are, 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 have got big problems. Spain play some nice football, but they've got some issues. Brazil, maybe, are the team that are going to grow slowly in this World Cup. Didn't start well, but, you know, they could improve. But nothing I've seen so far suggests that there's a, you know, there's not an outstanding side like there was Germany four years ago. Spain in, in 2010. It's a really open tournament. So if you had to put your money on, on someone now, you'd be, you'd be holding your, keep your powder dry a bit, would you? Or, or well, you know, I'm spreading, Jerry, your, I'm, spreading I'm, your bets. I'm from Aberdeen, you know, it's, it's hard to part me, part my, part me with my money. But um, I would still be betting on Brazil. They were my ten tips for the tournament beforehand. Um, I, I think they've got the best tournament experience. They've got a really good side. Looks no, like Neymar's fit as well. Looks like Neymar's fit, playing. and he should get better as he gets, you know, more match practice. They've got talent to burn. Um, I know they didn't start brilliantly, but they still got a result. So they'd be they'd be my tip at the moment. Fantastic, Johnny Northcroft. Thanks for joining us today. Keep coming back for the William Hill FWA podcast.